I want to take a minute to talk about why exactly nose work is so good for dogs and why any dog can do it. So it's something that you will have to sell some of your clients on. And when I say sell, I don't mean like use car salesman sale. But when you're trying to explain to someone who has no place to put what detection is, and you try to tell them, no, come to class and teach your dog to find Q-tips. They're like, what? Why? Why? How is that beneficial? I don't want my dog sniffing all over my house or you know, my dog is, is really not into me and they don't really like training and they'll, they're never going to do that. No, they are going to do that and they're going to love doing that. So when we talk about obedience and we're talking about things like recalls and engagement and focus, why is it hard to get that? It's hard to get that because the environment is fun. Dogs chase lizards and they chase squirrels and they play with other dogs and they run around and chase leaves. All of those are what we call self-reinforcing behaviors, right? So we've talked about what that means. That means when the dog is in the act of doing those, they're getting dopamine and endorphins released in their body, right? So there's a reason that your dog can chase a squirrel its whole life and never catch one, but it continues to chase the squirrel. It's not about catching the squirrel. Catching the squirrel is a secondary benefit. They're chasing it because of the feeling that they get when they're in the act of doing so. So one of the things I tell people to think about, I've been a National Geographic junkie since I was like that tall. And so you watch National Geographic and you see some predator. It's a lone wolf or a lion and they're emaciated and they've got a cut on their foot. You're thinking, oh, that's it. Like this is gonna be a sad episode of National Geographic. And then they take off after something and you're like, how do they possibly have the energy to do that? It's because they're kind of like a junkie. Like they will use whatever little bit they have left to go after the animal. So you think, okay, it's starving. They're, they're, they wanna hunt, they wanna eat. Well, yes, but also they want the rush. They want the feeling. So it's kind of nature's way of making you get up and continue to hunt even when you absolutely don't think you have to. So all of us, we all have these chemicals working within us all the time and we tend to repeat the ones that make us feel good. It's the same thing that happens in training your obedience. So I've chatted with everybody about that. You have something you're really good at, it makes you feel good when you do it. You're like, look, my dog does that well. And so then you go out to practice and what do you do? You do what your dog does well because it makes you feel good. You don't want to do the stuff you're not as good at because you don't have happy feelings for that yet. So all of the dogs, it doesn't matter if it's a Pekingese or a Pit Bull or a Great Dane, they're all going to get happy feelings when they're searching, right? And in the beginning, we're making it super easy for them to be successful. So they get their happy feelings while they're searching and then bam, they also get a food reward. So it's like a double whammy. And we move at the dog's pace. So that we're never in a hurry. And this is something that, for competitive people like me, can be difficult to remember. But in real life, we don't care how long it takes for dogs to find things. If there's a dog searching a football stadium, I'm about to go watch a football game in, and they're looking for explosives, I don't care if that guy has to get there at 5 o'clock in the morning and search for many, many hours before my Monday night football game. I just want it clear. 